Happy WA Day. What's happy about being in a studio working on a public holiday? Every day's been a public holiday for the anti-vaxxers. Until now, they're all coming back to work. Rio Tinto is the latest big company to say all is forgiven. From June 10, the miner is scrapping vaccination checks. Friday's D-Day because that's the date Mark McGowan is scrapping mandates for most workforces. Only people working in health, aged care and disability services will need to prove that they have been jabbed. The prison system and fireys are thinking about what they'll do. They might still require vaccination there. Anti-vaxxers held their ground and won. Yep, we blinked. I suspect we blink because the skills crisis is so bad we need every worker, regardless of how selfish they might be. What are we going to do when the monkeypox really takes off and we all need to be vaccinated against that? The conspiracy dickheads will know that if they just hunker down, they'll eventually be allowed back into society. Rio sent out a memo saying it realised some of its workers who did the right thing will be worried about being surrounded by unvaxxed colleagues. I appreciate that this change may have an impact on some of our people and I encourage anyone to talk to their leader, our employee assistance program or a peer supporter for support during this time, is what they said. Yeah, I'm not so sure it's going to be the vaccinated workers needing support. No, the ones coming back to work are going to be the least popular kids in the cafeteria. Don't worry about the FIFO workers. How would you be being one of the cops coming back on the beat after a six-month paid holiday? You guys are getting paid? They're going to be very popular, aren't they? Half a year on vacation, on full pay, while everyone else did the work. Yep, sat back and watched the money roll in. Nothing compared to what this guy's raking in, though. That's Malcolm Steinberg. The name will mean nothing to you, but you will recognise his business. Malcolm is the bloke who invented Time Zone. It's a very well-known brand, obviously. It's all over Australia, Singapore, Indonesia, even the Philippines. But few people know the West Australian story behind it. Malcolm got his start in the games industry in 1958 when his uncle gave him his collection of 21 pinball machines. He was only 18 back then, but he struck deals with the owners of fish and chip shops and milk bars, back when we had milk bars, to give him space for the machines in return for half the take. It was a bit controversial because pinball machines were seen to attract undesirables. And this, at closer look... <laughs> It's a pinball machine. He grew the business and it hit its heyday in the 80s with games like this. This. And later on, this. Again, it sounds nuts at a time when kids are sending dick pics to each other while watching hardcore <laughs> porn, but arcade games were seen as vice dens. But to critics, as Terry Drinkwater reports, they are a menace. Physically, you can become physically dependent upon it. It's the same as a roller coaster or gambling or playing cards intensely. Games were so PG. Mm, back then we were worried about the youth being corrupted because they were playing this. And today we're happy they're playing this because at least it means they aren't ejecting meth into their eyeballs. Malcolm didn't let the naysayers get him down and he wasn't afraid to spend money to grow his business. In the mid-90s, he spent $55 million refurbishing his 60 Australian outlets and poured $10 million into a time zone research centre in Welshpool. Every kid's dream job. Not just the kids. In 2017, Steinberg sold half his business to private equity giant Quadrant. We don't know how much for, but back then he had 200 arcades around the world and they were turning over $150 million a year, so it would have been a lot. That same year he expanded into the one industry that screams late 70s, early 80s, even more than Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm slamming him tonight. You guys are dead in the water. He picked up Kingpin and Zone Bowling. It turned out to be quite a good deal because in 2019 he was the 40th richest West Australian with wealth estimated at $220 million. Jesus. You said it, man. Malcolm's in the headlines at the moment because he's rumoured to be considering selling his ownership stake. Ooh, how much for? Again, we don't know because it's a private business. But we do know that he won't be rushed into a sale. This guy is patient. In 2014, he put his Mosman Park mansion on the market and waited five and a half years for it to be sold. Went for $8.5 million. <coughs> I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.